Hello, so in this video, we're going to work on simplifying cube roots and roots of the nth term, or to the nth term. And uh, if you're really pretty comfortable with simplifying square roots, then this shouldn't be too bad for you. Let's get started. So a quick review. What, what is a root again? Well, we know the square root of a number like 4 is just 2. It's asking what times itself equals 4. So there's an invisible 2 here. That's a square root. Anything, you know, uh, less than 2, we're, we're going to worry about. Um, so if this number was anything less than 2, we'll worry about that in another uh, video lesson. But let's talk about whole numbers greater than 2. So what if I have a cube root? So let's think of a number like 8. Well, that's also 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So it's asking what number times itself times itself is 8. Um, and the, of course, this answer, the answer to that is, is 2. So these function very similarly to our square roots when we simplify them with one interesting caveat. So what if I asked you what the cube root of negative 8 was? Well, we would have to say negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is equal to negative 8. These first negative 2s get me positive 4, but then my positive 4 times that negative 2 gets me negative 8. So cube roots could have a negative under the radical sign. Whereas if I said the square root of negative 4, there's really nothing that I can think of times itself is going to be a negative number because a negative times a negative is a positive, and a positive times a positive is a positive. And in algebra 2, most likely, or, or sooner or later, depending on when you get to it, there, um, this is where imaginary numbers come into place on how we would evaluate this. We're not going to talk about imaginary numbers, though. I just wanted to make the point that with cube roots, you can have negatives. Well, let's extend this then. Let's extend this to uh, one that uh, maybe to the fourth root. So what if I add 16? Well, the fourth root of 16 is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So this number indicates how many times the number has to be multiplied by itself to get this number. So 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. But again, I couldn't say it was negative without getting into imaginary numbers because that would there's really no way if you have an even number of numbers to get something that's negative. So like, for example, if I was to put negative signs here, it's still going to be positive because this gets me positive 4. This gets me positive 4, and 4 times 4 is still 16. But if I was to find the fifth root of 32, or rather a negative 32, that would work as negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 32. Whew. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this leads us to extrapolate or to predict that any, uh, and when I say the to the nth root, it means this number could really be anything. Any number that's even is going to, you know, you couldn't have anything negative under the radical if, if this number is even without getting into imaginary numbers. But if it was odd, we could have negative numbers. So let's get to uh, simplifying these roots, these cube roots and these roots to the nth term. So what about something like this, the cube root of 54? Well, a good method for this is to pull out a perfect cube. So I could say, okay, this is, you know, the 27 times 2, and we know the cubic root of 27 is 3. But that doesn't always work well for us. So there's one another way. It's that prime factor method I showed you. So this would be... Uh, my mind's blank now. This would be 2 and 27. There we go. And this would be 3 and 9. And then this would be 3 and 3. So this is the same thing as the cubic root of 3 cubed times 2. Now, it's important to remember the cubic root of 3 cubed is just 3. Or rather, uh, we could make it more general. And we could say the cubic root of anything cubed is that thing. And that makes a lot of sense. It's really the same principle that the square root of x squared is just x. So I'm going to be able to pull out this 3 cubed because this cubic root of 3 cubed is just 3. But I'm still left with the cubic root of 2, which is irrational. So this is the simplified version. It works very much like a square root. Let's talk about another method really quick, the cubic root of 54. Um, I don't know if, if this is something you know yet, but you might find this helpful. It might just be confusing if it's something you've never seen. But there's this uh, interesting thing here. So if I have an uh, to the nth root, so I'm just using a variable there, of let's say the number a to the n power, that is equal to a 
to the m over n. It's just another way of writing it. So when you have fractional exponents, they're just roots. So uh, 4 to the 1 half power is exactly the same thing as the square root of 4 to the first. The 1 right there and the 2 right there. It's just another way of writing the exact same thing. Just a notation. And we know, of course, the answer to that is 2. The square root of 4 is 2. So how would that help us here? Well, this means then that this is the same thing as 54 to the 1 third power. So when we're finding that prime factorization like we did, and we said that 54 was equal to, or is equal to rather, 3 to the third times 2, if you remember that? Well, that's the same thing as 3 to the third to the 1 third power times 2 to the 1 third power. And again, the reason we're allowed to split those up let me give myself just a bit more room here. The reason we're allowed to split those up is because the cubic root of 54 is equal to the cubic root of 2 times 3 cubed is equal to the cubic root of 2 times the cubic root of 3 cubed. So we can split them up however we want. So when we rewrite this as 54 to the 1 third, that's the same thing as saying, okay, 2 times 3 to cubed to the 1 third which is the same thing as saying 2 to the 1 third times 3 cubed to the 1 third. Now, if you remember your exponent properties in situations like this, where I've got a power to a power, you can just multiply. Well, what does 3 to the 1 third equal? Well, it just equals 1. And 2 to the 1 third, well, there's nothing to multiply there. So this is 2 to the 1 third times 3 to the first, which is the same thing as 3 times the cubic root of 2. Now that method completely confused you, don't even worry about it. It's just another way to think about it. The prime factor method is, will, will work nicely and perhaps later, at least my students later, when we get into fractional exponents, we're, we are going to make that connection very strongly and figure that out. And I encourage you to look at that a bit closer. Alright, let's do, uh, you know, I'm going to do two more problems I think for this. This will be helpful. So if we were to simplify this, this is the same thing as um, well, I can't say it's the same thing as something until I find it. So I'm going to find the prime factorization of this. So it's 48 times 10. 10 we know is 2 and 5. 48 we know is 4 and 12 will be one way to do it. 4 is 2 squared. And 12 is 4 or 2 squared times 3. So I know my prime factorization is 2 to the 5th. So it's the same thing as the 5th root of 2 to the 5th times 3 times 5 times n to the 11th and y to the to the third. So we're going to try to match these up just like we would on any other uh, root. So really this is a root to the nth term so to speak because it's a number not this is a 5 it's not uh, a 2 or a 3 so it's just saying you know this number really could be anything and we want you guys to know how to simplify it that number right there. So we have to know that the uh, fifth root of anything to the fifth power is just that thing. That principle holds true. That's very important. So the fifth root of two to the fifth is just two. I can't take out the three or the five, but how many um, fives do I have here? Well, I have two fives in there and I have one left over. So I'm going to have an n squared outside and an n left inside. So everything we have left inside here would be the three and the five, so 15. At 1n, and then I can't do anything to the y to the third because there's not enough to pull any out. So this would be the simplified version of that problem. Um, and then I think I'd like to do one more uh, just to help us look at this, I guess, a, a slightly different way. I'll do a, I'll end with a cubic root. Okay, and again, you know, it, I don't think it really matters what method you use to simplify these, but there is value in seeing and understanding multiple ways. So uh, I want to talk about the fractional um, exponent thing again. So we have to remember that anything, you know, if there's, you know, whatever number there is there to, uh, let's use a and m again, that's equal to a to the uh, m over n power as a fraction. So we know that this is the same thing as 27 times x to the 7th times y to the 5th, all of that to the uh, one third power because we could theoretically say that this whole thing is being raised to the first power okay and I, that's a little strange but it just means that 27 x to the seventh y to the fifth there's just one of those there 
and that I think that works for us. So then we can split that up again and say, okay, that's 27 to the one-third power times x to the seventh to the one-third power times y to the fifth to the one-third power. But we know 27, we know 27 is just three cubed, so three cubed to the one-third power times x to the seventh to the one-third power times y to the fifth to the one-third power. That's going to all be equal to three x to the seventh over three and y to the five over three power once we multiply them. So I just multiplied the one-third by the seven, the one-third by the five, and the one-third by the three. So this doesn't seem to help us. In fact, this does overcomplicate the problem in some ways. If you're just trying to simplify it, I wouldn't necessarily use this method. I'm just showing you some connections. So, well, this, what does this even mean then? Well, it, it means that first of all, the cubic root of 27, x to the seventh, y to the fifth, is the same thing as this. We've just rewritten it. And you can probably see, you probably already guessed that this, or, or done the math, that we can pull out a three because of the 27. We can pull out two x's because three goes into seven twice. There's still an x left. And we can pull out a one y because three goes into five once with two left over times the cubic root of uh, x y squared because there were two y's left and one x left. So how, do, how does this make sense to what we have? Well, this is just division, right? Seven thirds, so if we look at that seven thirds, that's two and one third. So I pulled out two x's and left that one third, the cubic root, inside. Well, five is just five thirds, is just one and two thirds. So I pulled out that one y right here, and that two-thirds y is y squared to the one-third power. So there's all kinds of different connections you can make with these, and it's kind of fun. So I encourage you to experiment and try to make as many connections as possible. All right, thanks.